Hello fellow artist. Today we're going to be talking about inking. Yes, working with ink on paper, uh, particularly working uh, with a brush, not a dip pen, not a felt tip pen, uh, but working with a brush, but a brush pen, not uh, not dipping a brush into, into actual ink, which is a lot of fun, a lot of skill, but very dangerous. If this spills, you're going to ruin your clothes and I'm not going to be responsible for that. Now we're going to be working with brush pens and these are three of my favorites uh, here I've got a felt tip pen this is made by by Faber Castell it is the the pit pen uh, it is like I said it is a felt tip like that focus on that uh, it's great because it's um it's very inexpensive uh, very versatile the thing is it's not it doesn't have bristles it has a a, a flexible uh, point is very thick, so it acts like a, a, a brush. You get the nice thick and thin lines with um, different pressure, but um, it is a felt tip. And for the longest time, uh, I was frustrated with these because it seemed to the point seemed to run out before the ink ran out. But then someone showed me, you can take this this tip, and I would suggest using tweezers or Kleenex to do this. And you can, when it wears out, you can pull it out like that, turn it around. And they give you two points in there, two nibs for the price of one. I don't see I've got, but there I've got a brand new sharp, uh, um, a sharp felt tip uh, to use the rest of the ink of that with. So, bonus score. It's um, it's economical that way. Uh, next in line we have the Kuretake. Um, it's not written on there, but it's a beautiful pen. Uh, it's uh, I haven't been able to find one that has waterproof ink though. And I prefer waterproof ink because I often, as you know, uh, put watercolor on top of my drawings. And if you do that on top of a, a water-soluble ink, it's going to bleed and turn everything gray. However, I have used just plain water on of this pen. You know, over after I've drawn, I've, I've splashed some water to get some nice gray tones, and it is a lot of fun that way. Again, it's a great, uh, great point. It is. Um, it's got. Oh, this is a felt tip as well. Oh, my favorite for today is the, the Pentel pocket brush. This is made by Pentel in Japan. It is uh, really great. It's, uh, it's got a great brush tip. Those are actual nylon bristles. Uh, you can see how they, uh, example here, they can, they spread apart. And if I, let's see if I can show you here. They are actual bristles. You can see how they will spread. And you can use that effect to get some nice dry brush effects. Uh, not true dry brush because it does have a, just like the Kuretake, it's got a replaceable cartridge. Um, and it is waterproof ink. That's great unless you drop it on your clothes or the carpet. Uh, but yes, it's not going to wash off your paper. Uh, speaking of paper, that's the next thing we're going to talk about. Um, you can use this on just about any paper, anything that's a, a, a bit porous. You don't want to use it on something too slick like the smooth side of a poster board because it won't uh, seep in and won't dry. You know, you need something that, that has a bit of um, uh, absorption to it, something a little bit porous. So test out whatever paper you're going to use. Most of the time, I like to use watercolor paper because I'm going to be painting over it. And uh, watercolor paper, cold press watercolor paper. This is by Strathmore. Uh, it has a, a nice tooth to it. It's got some ridges to it and, and a texture which uh, affects your line. You get that bumpy texture um, built into your line so it, you can't get a beautiful, uh, um, pristine, smooth line. It's going to have some texture, some, some irregularities in it. And, but I like that. Or if you want to splash uh, watercolor on it, but you don't want that texture, you can use hot press watercolor paper. Uh, this happens to be Arches uh, brand. Uh, hot press, uh, it's a, just a different manufacturing technique, technique, and the surface is a lot smoother. Uh, a lot of people like prefer that. I generally lean toward cold press, which is rougher, but I like hot press too. Again, if you want something you know, that's going to be a little smoother and you want a, a more of a pristine, crisp line, you don't want the, the irregularities in the paper. Um, it's a beautiful paper. It's, it's, it's nice and absorbent. Uh, uh, for watercolors. That's good. But today uh, we're going to be working on Bond. Bristol Bond. Some of you are old enough to get that joke. Uh, this is uh, Bristol paper. This is, uh, it's, it's very smooth. It's a little less absorbent. 
it, uh, so the ink doesn't dry quite as fast. You have to be careful not to smear it. But it's got a beautiful surface and it's made for taking ink. In fact, it's, it's one of the best ink surfaces you can get. Uh, so I, I highly recommend it and that's what we're going to be doing today. Let's, let's talk about just some, some general techniques, things you'll need to, to know. Uh, about how to just approach uh, drawing with a brush pen. It's, it's very, very different from uh, drawing with a dip pen or a felt tip marker or anything like that. The main reason is, since you've got, you know, bristles, uh, you don't, there's, there's no, you know, there's no tactile sense of pressure. Uh, you, can, you don't really feel those bristles hitting, hitting the, uh, it's, you don't, there's no resistance. So if you, Barely touch the paper, you'll get a nice smooth line, a nice smooth, a nice thin line. And as you increase the pressure, uh, you'll get, you know, you know, a very thick line. That's you know simple enough. You have to be careful that when you're barely touching it, the, the paper and doing those thin lines, if you don't have a steady hand, your you know your your line, your hand kind of turns into a seismograph, and you start getting these. You know, bumpy lines, or even if you're going not just back and forth, but up and down, you can get, you know, variation in your line. Now, that can be a really cool technique, but just be aware of it. Um, of course, there are many uh, techniques within this. Let's uh, you can use thick and thin, not just thick or thin, and get lines that that feather out, and you can, uh, you know do some shading that way or you can even if you want to do thin lines you can get some cross hatching going in like that for you know for shading um, adding variance within your line going like I said before thick uh, thin to thick like that adds a little bit of weight underneath you know an object like that and put a little shadow there and leaving that gap there kind of suggest a highlight. Now let's say you want to draw um, you know, straight lines or circles, since I, since I drew that one. That's going to be a little trickier um, uh, for several reasons. But let's go, um, let's say you just want to just freehand, no tools, no rulers or anything, draw a straight line. That's tricky. <laughs> straight lines are hard. You'll want to um, create a, a stable uh, um, uh, stable grip for your your uh, your pen. You don't want to just be, you know, drawing, you know, not touching the paper. Get your hand on the paper. Get uh, uh, let your your pen, you know, uh, be locked into your fingers, and just draw your hand toward you in a straight line, like that. Isn't it? Um, it's much easier than trying to go across. For me, it is. Again, it comes with practice. Just get get kind of form a little tripod. Get your 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 ring your fingers your fist resting very firmly on the on your pad and draw straight down like that. Now these lines aren't perfectly straight. They aren't you no know, ruler straight. Um, if you want to get really nice perfect lines, you're going to probably want to use a not use a brush pen. But let's say you are, and this is all you've got and you want to get a ruler straight line and you want to use a ruler. Uh, this is just a plastic ruler with a little beveled edge on it. Just, um, not, nothing special at all. Um, but say you put it down there and you draw right along there, which I wouldn't recommend. Let's say your bristles are right along the edge. Why? Because when you move your, your ruler, you get this bad smear because the ink has bled up under the edge. Now, capillary action. Run the bristles, you get ink on the edge of your ruler and then you rub your hand against it and it gets everywhere. So there's some other techniques, some other ways we can uh, avoid that. One way is to uh, simply turn the ruler over so the bevel uh, you know, is, is on the underside and there's a little bit of space between the ruler and the paper. That way if you, you know, draw a straight line you can you know, move it and it's not going to smear because that part of the ruler is not touching the paper. However, you still have ink on the edge of your ruler that you'll have to clean off. So, how do we avoid that? One way is um, 
you can hold your whole ruler up off the up off the paper for you know about a you know quarter inch half inch put your fingers just underneath it like that and that way the edge of your pen is touching the plastic not the bristles it's a little trickier and requires a little more practice but you can manage it now let's talk about circles just briefly uh, if you, you can practice, which I re highly recommend, the best way is just to practice drawing a circle like that. And you get the nice thick and thin, some variation in your line. But if, you're, if, you, if you don't feel confident in that, you can use a template. Uh, now templates don't work very well for the same reason the rulers don't. Um, you, you know, just trying to draw a circle in there even if I'm holding it up because it's it's just awkward and I wouldn't recommend it. You get the inside of your template messed up. It's just, it's not worth the hassle. Uh, however, if you want to take a pencil and draw a few circles lightly, just to get in some practice, something to, to trace over, it'll give you a bit of a guide to practice with. I know there are a lot of people who are much better at this than I am. Now I'm holding my hand up off the paper because this is wet and my lines are getting a lot shakier. But I can turn that around. Which brings me to another tip. When you're drawing in ink, whether it's with a brush or a pen, always work um, away from away from where uh, you're drawing. And that means if you're right-handed, start on the, the left-hand side of your drawing and work across the page this way because the ink is wet. And if you start over here and start working this way, your hand is going to drag through the ink and smear your drawing. Same thing if you're left-handed, start on the, the right-hand side of your drawing and work the other way. If you, know, you make a mistake and you start going and you start on the wrong side, turn your paper around and, and it works that way. Um, so let's dig into something. Let's put some of these techniques to, uh, to use. So I have had drawn a dog in blue pencil. So again, I'm going to start over on the left hand side and work right as much as I can. Now this is an anthropomorphic dog. That is, she's dressed, she's wearing clothes, she's using hands, uh, using her paws as hands. So it's a bit, a bit cartoony there. Again, notice sometimes I'm using very light pressure and sometimes I'm using heavier pressure, like having a bit of scrap here so I can there. Now you can see, I hope that there's some that her nose is still rather wet. And this is that's what I was talking about. If I was left handed and started there, I could very easily smear that ink over my drawing. And we don't want that. white for her tooth there. I'm going to blacken in under her neck there just to indicate some shadow. A very light line right there, showing the color separation from her nose to her jowl. Notice also I'm pulling the pin toward me. I don't want to push because if you push, 
your bristles, you don't get in the line you wanted. The, the, the bristles themselves kind of flay apart. They don't have you know, the, the control there. Always pull your bristle, not necessarily, not necessarily always toward you. You can pull sideways if you like, but always be pulling. And that means you always, you'll be having to turn your drawing around to, to get to the area you want. Okay, now get this ridge between her eyes. There. I like working f fast sometimes and kind of discovering the thick and thin the bristles will naturally give me, like I just did on there on her eyebrow. That one little wish, like that turned out nice. I'm just gonna leave it just like that. see your other people very well and that's all right get some wispy lines in there for inside her ear her other ear is turned away from us just barely Now this line right here, right here, that's what I love in the magic of using a brush pen. Just quickly doing some back and forth and getting some nice thick and thin lines. Okay, while I've uh, sped up the drawing process here, so uh, my what, 10 or 15 minute drawing has shrunk down to two minutes, um, I want to just describe kind of what's going on in my head as I draw. Uh, I, I've, a lot of it becomes intuitive after a while. Uh, starting off, you have to really concentrate where you want your thick and thin lines. But right like there, when I was doing the wrinkles and the crook of her elbow, uh, letting the, the pressure of the pen make these thick and thin folds, and it really replicates a nice uh, shadow feel. And it, it's very, you can very quickly uh, create uh, believable wrinkles and folds in cloth. I uh, have to be very delicate around here around her her fingers um, because there's just a lot more detail in there and uh, and yes I did cheat on the anatomy. Dogs can't turn their paws around like that. I had to, we had to yeah, like I said she's anthropomorphic we we let little cheats go by. Um, but yes this become it's intuitive for me because I don't have to think about where I want thick and thick and thins all the time. It's but it comes with practice. You know, if you do this over and over enough, you, it just becomes second nature after a while. Again, putting in some larger black areas because uh, I don't have any gray tones for shadows. You can just uh, it's called spotting your blacks. Just adding some nice uh, shadows here and there. There's our drawing. She's telling off somebody in her shot. Maybe soften these, that shadow just a little bit more. And thicken up this one under her arm. There. Hey, that is uh, one way to ink with a brush. Let's try something else. Uh, now let's try something a little more realistic. I'm gonna work off a photo of one of our cats here. And I'm going, this time though, I'm not gonna work with an underdrawing. I'm going to uh, draw as if I'm out sketching in my sketchbook. Again, while I've sped up the drawing process here, I'm going to provide some narration and kind of give you my thought process. Um, and you see, I'm working, uh, even though this is sped up, I'm still working pretty quick. But I'm blocking in large shapes. I'm not noodling with detail. I'm trying to get the overall feel for the cat's uh, position, the body, the and where to place him on the page. Uh, and I'm, uh, and I would suggest if you're going to draw animals, you know, to get to know some of their an anatomy first, because when you're drawing fast, you can't think about, oh my goodness, what's, what are the bones and muscles doing under there? And yeah, there's a lot of skin and fat over the structure, so you have to know where shoulders and elbows and, and, and knees lie. But you see, I've got the general shape here, and now I can go back in and start fleshing in some of the detail. 
and uh, our cat is mostly gray. Though, like I uh, mentioned while I was drawing the dog, I don't have any half tones, no grays. This is just going to be black and white, so I've got to make some bold choices and where to drop in uh, large areas of black. But the beauty of a, a brush marker is uh, a brush pen is yes, I can get fine lines, but then right next to that, with, without changing tools, I can get some very, very bold uh, black lines as well and fill in large swaths of color. Uh, as you can see. And I'm, I'm using the, the, the contour of the cat's body. I'm curving the, you can see that how I'm brushing at a curve. That's to follow the, the curve of his body and the, the direction of the, the way his fur uh, is growing too. So it adds some roundness. Uh, even though it's very loose, it adds, it's more, more detail than meets the eye. There's our kitty. So I hope I've been able to show you some of the versatility and the beauty of working with a brush pen, working very slowly and deliberately, as well as working very quickly and sketchy. Uh, it's a, just a great tool and offers a lot of uh, a broad variety of line and style. So enjoy. So there we go. I hope you had fun today. I did want to emphasize, though, this video is not supposed to be the, you know, the five secrets or the seven secrets to great inking, and once you watch this video, you'll be an expert. No, it's, it's an introduction. This is to show you a few techniques for you to practice and become an expert. The secret to anything is practicing. Just do it over and over and over, and that's the only way to get better. There's no other secret besides that. So I hope you had fun, continue to have fun and draw and, and you'll mess up sometimes and you'll learn from your mistakes and, but that means you're getting better. So go out there, have fun, um, do something nice for someone today, make someone happy. And now for the commercial part. If you like this video, remember to hit subscribe. And if you want some art lessons, I've got some videos over on creatureartteacher.com. The link is down in the descriptions. Thanks everyone.